Hi there everyone. I told Keith for our 200th episode I wanted something a little bit special. Can you imagine how excited I was when I turned up today here in the Royal Society reading room and this was presented. I couldn't believe it. I said to Keith, this is amazing. What have you come up with? This is going to be a really exciting video. Mm. And Keith says, this is. I've got a video all about information management systems. Keith, what are you doing to me? Oh, this is, but this is, this is very exciting. Is it? Yeah, it really is. Look at this mound of paper. I don't think you've ever pulled together such a huge number of documents for one video. I think this is the first time this mound of documents has been together since 1864. So actually to get it all out and put it together in the way it should be seen is rather fabulous. And we're going to be talking about one of the most famous and important families in scientific history. This is the Herschels. Where do we start? I can't even imagine where we start. Let's take the information flow from beginning to end. <laughs> the information we? flow. Yeah, that's what we need. All these books I see here have got sweeps written on them. That's correct. So this is William Herschel and Caroline Herschel sitting outside at Slough with a 20-inch telescope sweeping the night sky and just recording everything they see, but particularly what they're looking for are nebulae. Nebula. These are fuzzy objects in the sky. That's right. Some of them are galaxies, some of them are planetary nebulae, gas clouds, all manner of things. 1783, 1784, all the way through here to 1789, That's I see. Right. And what does it look like inside? So you get the date here, yeah. and you might do more than one sweep in an evening, usually three or four at least. And you can see here he begins. I saw Venus with a new 10-foot reflector, so he's changed telescopes at this point, and he continues on from there. But could perceive no kind of something upon her? Spot upon Spot her. Spot upon her. I examined the nebula in Orion. He's obviously testing out his new telescope yeah. on all the classics. He's got a new toy, why wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. I love that he's looking at all the famous ones. He then has a look at Georgium Sidus, of course. Uranus. Uranus. Mm -hmm. I opened up to a good page, didn't I? You did, that was a good one. Yeah. yeah. So this is your raw data. This is the observational information, night on night for, for many years. But that's not the end of the story because they immediately copy that information into these registers. Now, Keith, I notice we've got these piles of paper, these registers, but you mm. can also not help but notice these blocks of wood surrounding them. Can yeah. you tell us what that's all about? So these blocks of paper were originally pressed between these blocks of wood, and you can see where they've been tied in the past. It's actually very bad for paper wood, and you can see it's stained the outside of, of these volumes, so oh, we yeah. don't store them that way anymore. But inside you can see nice white shining paper. But here we have a chronological listing of the nebulae from the first date of their observation with every other observation on the back of that. So this is kind of taking all that raw data from the sweeps and bunching them together almost like by object. That's correct, yes. But they had to produce a variety of indices in order to access that data. And that's what we have over here. So this is the next step in the process. This one here particularly caught my eye because you know I have a great affection for Charles Messier's famous list of 110 objects. Mm -hmm. So basically this is Herschel taking Messier's already quite well-known list yep. and saying here's my version of those 110 That's right. with what I've seen when I look at them. So you can pick your favourite Messier object and you can see this is an M1 and this is all of the observations that the Herschels have made of that object. Oh, wow. M1's the Crab Nebula, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah. So the first example here, we have November 13th in 1782. I could not find Messier's Nebula 1, but the moon was too bright. So our first recording of it is a non-recording of it. Yeah. But then later on, we start seeing it. And we see all these observations that are being made. Oh, well, here we go. Now we're using the 10-foot telescope. And with a fine new 10 feet. It is resolvable, and with 170, some of the faint stars may be seen. It is, however, possible that faint milky nebulosity may be mixed with a few very small stars. This is fantastic. I have a YouTube channel that's all about the Messier objects, Keith. I think I might be raiding these Start documents. from number one. You might want to find the position of a particular object. So there's positional data here. This is Caroline Herschel's catalogue of objects and zones from the Pole Star, and John Herschel's general index to the 2,508 nebulae observed by his father and aunt. Okay, so the whole purpose of this is to produce 
catalogues of nebulae. And William Herschel produces three of those, a thousand stars, then another thousand stars, then an extra 508 on the end of it. And they're published in the Philosophical Transactions. These are the manuscripts of that. Look at this, Keith. Mm. This is history in the making here. And I love that this is the handwritten manuscript. We can see the title, Catalogue of a Thousand New Nebula and Clusters of Stars by William Herschel. Where's Carolyn? I, exactly. She's, <laughs> she's got missing there somewhere. He's, he's, uh, he's, snub he's yeah, snubbed his sister. Yeah, she's doing a lot of the hard work too. She is. Um, I hope Carolyn gets a mention somewhere in here. Anyway, we're making sure she gets a mention. Here we have the catalogue itself. And okay. this is a key bit. Herschel's catalogue is, is the standard information on nebulae for quite some time. So his three papers are really classics of, of that genre. So this almost became like the telephone book of space. Yep, yep. Do you like that? I just came out with that yeah, then. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, okay. You don't seem sure. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's our 200th episode, let's find what number 200 was. 200 looks like a bit of a nondescript one, I'm afraid. He's actually classified the nebulae, and there's a description here mm. which is abbreviated. And you get this a lot in nebulae catalogues where you have to have the key to find out what all of these little letters mean. So just to recap, we start here with the sweet books in the telescope. We put it in the register. We reorganize it in different ways. Correct. And then finally, it's like, well, we need one nice collection yeah. organized in a special way. Of course, it doesn't end here for the Herschels because oh, next no. comes John Herschel. That's right, yes. This is the son of William. He takes things a bit further, doesn't he? He does. From the 1820s, he's checking his dad's data, uh, but then he begins to pull together information from other sources. So there are lots of other published catalogues of nebulae produced over this period, and he pulls them together into one general catalog of nebulae that will take over from his father's great work. This is the sequel to his father's work, yes. which is even bigger and better. And this, mm -hmm. again, is the original manuscript, which is really great to see. And I can't help but notice John's got a bit more organized, mm -hmm. and he's actually pre-printed his headings and sort of a pro forma piece of paper. So That's that right, yeah, well, there's more data to manage, so he, he's got to take this approach. How many were in his catalogue do we know? I, actually, I can look, can't I? I can look. 5,079. I like what's happened here, Keith. He's got out of sync, so That's he's having right. to cross out the digits. You have to manage an enormous amount of data. The potential for introducing errors was really substantial. And by the way, also, this is his cover letter to go with the manuscript. That's doesn't? right, yes. Mm. So this is the introduction, which tells you exactly what he's been doing and what the significance of it is. And of course, the finished masterpiece printed in that famous Royal Society journal, Philosophical Transactions. Here it is. Catalogue of Nebulae and Clusters of Stars by Sir John Frederick William Herschel. So this is read to the Royal Society in 1863, published in 1864, and this is the end point of the Herschel family business for the past 80 years on nebulae and clusters. Here are the tables, still very famous in the world of astronomy. And because this is the end point, this is when Sir John Herschel presents all of that other data to the Royal Society in one single accession. So he gives all of this as like a big gift at the same yeah. time. Like, this is it, we're so done, he's, and here's how we did he's it. saying, here's my paper, this is the data set that lives behind it. And you can see just here, he describes each one of these particular sets of papers. So you've got your register sheets, you've got your individual bits of indexing to it, and you have, right at the end, the original sweeps from the 20-foot reflector at Slough. There you go, people. That's our 200th episode, and it's all about information management systems, digitizing documents. Yeah. What more could Keith have wanted? Yeah, perfect. It's a very, very famous picture of kind of the payoff from all this effort of measuring the numbers of stars in all sorts of directions is actually a map of the Milky Way. It's one of the great images in science, really, Absolutely. isn't it? Yeah. So this is the actual one. This is the yep. drawn with the ink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm right next to it. Yeah. Oh, I should be more careful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's remarkable. What's it like seeing the actual drawing? It is amazing. It truly is.